Hello and welcome to Podcast Unlocked, episode 403. I'm Miranda Sanchez filling in for Ryan McCaffrey today. We have a little bit of a lighter show. If you're watching, maybe you've seen that already. <laughs> um, but we're not light in content. There's still plenty of things going on. Today we're going to talk about Overwatch's new hero, Sigma. Uh, Hideo Kojima's comments on streaming and the future of gaming. That's always interesting. And then, of course, I think our most important thing is the Gears 5 tech test, which I am personally very excited about. Uh, so stick with us for this fun show. Of course, I'm being like a little presumptuous when I say fun. Yeah. It's like, you know, I mean, this is going to be an interesting one, you, guys. You hope for the best, <laughs> right? Yeah. Aim yeah. for the job that you want. <laughs> yeah. So joining me this week is Brandon Tyrell. Hey, how you doing? And the ghosts no of everyone else. else. Yeah, just some ghosts. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, an interesting yeah. week. Everyone's busy. Everyone's yeah. out. It's Ryan, summertime. Ryan's People take a, vacations. Ryan's on a much deserved vacation right now. Yes, which is and very important. Destin's at an event. Mark Medina's at an event. Basically, mm -hmm. all the familiar faces that you know and love are busy, and Miranda and I are here. So you're stuck with us, holding down the fort. <laughs> so on this very special episode of Unlocked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just some updates. Don't forget that Sam Lake is July's unfiltered guest. So if you haven't checked that out, be sure yes. to. Yeah. Sam Lake, uh, the longtime writer for Remedy Entertainment. Um, Max Payne, Alan Wake, uh, Quantum Break. A lot of aches in their names. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> of course, how all that ties into control. And, you know, Sam Lake's thoughts on still wanting to make Alan Wake 2 a thing. Um, which who knows, since they got the license back, maybe that'll happen. Yeah, we'll see. But yes, that is this month's Unfiltered. Uh, kudos to Ryan, uh, as always, for, for you know putting out a great long-form interview. Uh huh. And then, of course, don't forget that Control is our IGN first for the month, so we'll have content for that going all month long. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go ahead and jump in. I think with what, for me, is the yeah. most important thing this week yeah. is the Gears 5 Tech Test, yes. which has been a lot of fun. Long time coming. Yes. So, so I know you didn't have a chance to check it out. So right? no, I was busy this weekend. I mm -hmm. didn't. It, it just runs over the weekends, correct? Yes, so okay. it was this past weekend, and we'll run this coming weekend as well. Okay, so why don't you break down exactly what the technical test is and, and sort of what you do in it? Yeah, so the tech test is a different way to say beta. It's <gasps> eventually, like, as they say, testing their tech hey. um, to see how multiplayer is running. So right. they introduced their new uh, kind of mode for multiplayer, which is called Arcade, and it's pretty much where I spent all my time playing this tech test because this is just so much fun. So um, it's 5v5. You each get to play a member of either a cog or a swarm. Mm -hmm. um, and so you get like whatever character you want on like based on that team. And they all have like their corresponding between the, each of the characters. Yeah. Um, so like you have like so the sniper mirrored, class. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like there's a mirror for everyone. Um, and what you do is that, of course, it's, it's just a team deathmatch. But the nice thing is, is that you kind of have a similar kill streak sort of deal, but it's really? not, but not in the typical sense. What you do is you earn these skulls based on how you kill people or like how um, you get like in different kinds of eliminations and those skulls save throughout your deaths. So like if you die, like you still have the skull save and then you can use them to buy different kind of equipment. So you can buy, depending uh, on your class, like incendiary grenades, or you can buy um, like a Marksa, like if you're playing a sniper, you can also get like a sniper. Like it just depends on your class. Do you buy you it like upgrade. immediately or do yes. it, does it come at the next life? Like immediately. kind of Counter-Strike? Yeah. Uh -oh. So it's like you just pull out that weapon. So if like you're out of ammo and like you've, you've got some skulls saved, like you can just pull out a new weapon. That's cool. Um, and it's really, yeah, interesting because I like that it's a little bit more lenient, I think, in what kills. I think it just kind of gives it to you if you assisted in it. So maybe oh, I'll cool. get one for just knocking somebody down or like yeah. kind of initiating that kill. Um, but if I, uh, you know, stomp someone to the ground, and, and then chase finish them off. Face off. Yeah, yeah, then I get to. Um, and I think it, yeah. So, like, it kind of just permeates through that. I think that makes this a lot more fun, and it's a nicer comeback mechanic for people who, are, you know, maybe are having a harder time getting those kills, but every time you kind of get those, yeah. you, you're get climbing back, and you have something, like, you have a resource to choose from. Eventually, and you can get a sniper toward, you know, yeah. somewhere or down if the road. you want a mulcher instead, like, yeah. you can get that. Sure. So, I think they have a mulcher. Yeah. Um, so you can also change your class mid-game. So it's like, oh, really? I don't like this. Yeah, which is, I always love that flexibility. Like, let me please, especially in shooters, like, just let me yeah. choose something else because this isn't working. Or they're changing. Overwatch-esque. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of games have done it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And just, like, having that flexibility is really important. So like, there was this one game I was playing, and um, it was kind of in the tutorial map mm -hmm. is where, where you're kind of, like, learning, the, like, kind of getting a 
your boots back on and like kind of yeah. relearning gears to have that as a map to play. I love your hand motions when you said yeah, get you your, boots, get your back boots back on. on. You're just like <laughs> tying up your laces, putting on your armor, yeah, you know, yeah. reloading your lancer, <laughs> practicing active reloads. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's like a really fun map because you've been there and you've seen it in different environments. So right. that as a multiplayer map is really cool. Um, but there's just one platform in the middle where you can just snipe from if you can kind of protect all corners. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what happened. Like, there were just incredible snipers on the enemy team. Really? And my team was just struggling. And, like, I think we had an NPC on our team just because it didn't get filled. So, oh, cool. So, so, it does, so it does fill AI, though. I think, I don't know if it's just for the tech test or if it's, like, mm -hmm. an arcade feature. like, they will fill within AI, which can be a problem, actually, because if you that AI is it. really easy to snipe off... Like you're losing essentially to another team because this AI is not competent, which also could just be a teammate problem too. Yeah. Right? Like I mean, that's going to happen either way. That's been a problem with like AI fill slots for the longest time. Like even yeah. in MOBAs, right? Like someone drops and if they fill it with an AI, it's like, well, now that lane that is Dota. now that lane is gone. You, you, he brought up MOBAs. So it wasn't me, guys. Anyway. <laughs> um, but that's the thing, right? Like, so you're giving up that spot. I, I mean, it kind of feels better, I think, than having an empty spot and nobody helping you. Um, and they are pretty good about marking enemies. That, that's something I noticed. And it's also really important is calling out and like marking on the map. Like, hey, there's someone right there. There's someone right there. Um, so I was able to change my class and just like get a bunch of incendiary grenades and just like chuck them in there. And it's like instant kills if it hits on them. So it's like, get out of there. Just the fire Snipers. everything moment. Yeah. yeah, it was really fun though. Like it, even if we were losing sometimes, it didn't feel too bad just because it was fun. It was yeah. again, like that arcadey feel to it. Um, another thing that happens is like when you like spawn, you see everyone on the map and you also see when people, if they're in like your field of view, like you can see when they've like equipped a new weapon that they have purchased with their skulls. So I think there's like a lot of- Is there like a, a like a universal ping that's like, beware, Miranda has napalm grenades. It's not like a beware, it's just above that player character. So you can see where they're at technically based on uh, that thing that appears above their head, but it's okay. Like again, it's I think it's supposed to be a faster, mm -hmm. more exciting. So it's like a risk reward arcade. thing. You pull yes. out your napalm grenade, but like, now everyone knows where you are. Yes. Got it. Potentially. But cool. if there's two people there and then someone runs off and they don't know the character classes very well, they don't know who has it. Okay. Who knows? Like, I've done that before. Little rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Thing. I had a cell phone. I was just like shooting people like crazy from <laughs> behind a wall. But I think they thought somebody who had gone behind me right. had, like maybe had it or something. Maybe not. I think I'm just reading into this. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe you're overthinking it. Yeah. Or is Anyway, I... <laughs> I got a lot of kills and it was great. But you enjoyed it. Yes, it was so fun. Cool. Um, of course, as a tech test, there were some technical issues, like yeah. just getting booted from lobbies. I was so mad because I had a really good game and then it just got booted. I was like, oh. What did you think of the looks of it? Because I saw, like, I, I've never been a huge Gears guy. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't jumped into the tech test yet. But from what I saw, like, I, <laughs> do you remember the 360 when, when Gears came out and, like, the first area you go into where there's those, like, god rays coming down? Mm -hmm. Um Oh, I can't remember the name of the level, but anyway, there's those god rays coming down, and you walk into this level, and you're just like, "This is this is the future. This is the future <laughs> of video gaming right here. It's yes. gorgeous." So Gears has sort of like been a benchmark for visuals, mm -hmm. at least on on Microsoft's ecosystem, um, and th the footage and the sort of the screens that I saw looked amazing. They yeah, looked it's really looked great. Good. Like Gears Four was fantastic. Yeah. I, it was cool um, when I was at the coalition for IGN first for Gears Four. They're like, let's show you the HDR differences yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Like just seeing all that stuff and how they're like really investing and in making sure like there's a good visual fidelity there is persistent. Um, and I also just like their map designs a lot. Yeah. I think with these this new generation of Gears, it's a very different kind of setting because it's not that locust worn torn. Um, area right. you knew that was like super gray and heavy. Yeah, um, what I, I saw there was like a town with neon lights. Yeah, like we one of the maps is like set in an arcade area. Like there's an arcade off to the side. And you can see all these games, and I really just wanted to sit there and like look <laughs> into these windows and like there's shops and stuff that you fight around as well. But it's just kind of cool to see that life present. Yeah, because it is like this community rebuilding, the society rebuilding, and I guess. The one thing that I always find weird with like betas and tech tests and like these sort of early demos is that they do reveal some things about the game you're going to play. Right. Because like the announcer for the swarm was a man and I don't know if I knew his voice. And so I was like, this is probably a new character that we yeah. haven't met. Probably. Um, I mean, I could be forgetting, but I don't think I've ever heard that guy's voice before. But in the same vein, like, what would happen if the Swarm's announcer was Marcus Phoenix? You're like, what's going to happen? Yeah, well, if that was, like, the... Oh, well, he's also a character, so it'd be kind of weird. It's like... Sure, sure. But he's above, also right next to me. Yes, yes. <laughs> but point is, like, yeah. But yeah, you, but, like, you, First Minister Jin, she was the announcer for kind of, like, the cog and, and everybody. Cool. So she's so. still theoretically in charge, right? During this? Yes. Yeah. 
So okay. I, I know, like she has a she has a present role in some voice. At least her voice does. Anyway, so it's just really interesting seeing that persist and like getting that details again from like we were in this town. There's like an arcade mm-hmm. and like kind of getting that vibe. It's like, well, maybe this is somewhere we go. That's not necessarily indicative always of like what you do. Like they have all sorts of maps for sure, sure. for that are not anywhere near environments that you get to see. But I do hope it is something we get to see because I do like cities, cityscapes, and kind of like a a more lively, less war torn. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's God, like going way back. I remember, uh, you know, you play Halo, you're totally on the Halo. And then Halo 2 comes in and you're fighting on Earth. On Earth, yeah. And, and you go through, was it New Mombasa? I, I don't remember mm-hmm. the name of the town, but I'm pretty sure um, you're fighting through buildings and, and, you know, you're in courtyards and there are cars and post boxes. And yeah. it, it kind of instills that feeling of like, when when you see sort of a lived in area like you're describing, mm-hmm. it, it instills that feeling that you really are more connected with the universe, right? Yeah. Rather than just like, oh, we're in a barren, blasted land of concrete and and uh, rubble. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping we do get to see more of that flushed out through years, and even if it's just through the maps. Like I think uh, in Gears Four, there is this great one that was like at a diner yeah. and it had like all these items listed. And I, I just love video game and like fantasy diners or like shops and stuff. They just, <laughs> they just reveal so much about this world. Like it's top it's 10 very best goofy. diners in video games. I had a Tumblr where I was like actually kind of curating a bunch of stores and stuff from right. like fictional things like poke so, shops and stuff. Anyway, but I'm, that, I'm that way. But I love that kind of stuff. When you said video games, I yeah. get really excited because I love seeing the video games that game designers create for their games. Oh, that's and this fun weird too. sort of inception kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's like, what do they play there? What's popular? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> the cheapest, weirdest. <laughs> no, but it's, it's world building, right? And yeah. so that's what I was happy to see with these maps that we got first. Well, cool. So yeah. uh, it's coming back this weekend. Yes. And then the one I didn't touch on much was versus. So it's like kind of your ranked very more hardcore, like capture like the four, point kind of thing. Four v four. Uh, I forget. I think it's still five v five. I don't. I don't remember. Okay. Anyway, I didn't touch that because the first time that I tried to get into it, it kept booting me out. Like I just couldn't connect properly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was also because I was playing really late on the Sunday because I had Monday off. So I was just like, oh, I can stay up late. And then it just wasn't working. So then I went back to arcade. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, cool. I can uh, back. Are they doing the? Um, are they doing? I the guess it's like six v six. I don't know. I'm thinking five. I think there's five characters. Six v six. Are I'm they doing sure. the other mode? Anyway, don't hold me to this. I'm tired. Yeah. Are they doing the <laughs> other mode, though? The um, the one that they debuted escape? at E3? Yeah, escape. No, this okay. is just this about is just multiplayer. Your, your classic multiplayer PvP. Um, I have some time this weekend. Maybe I'll check it out. Yeah, come join me. Okay. Just, please don't... If you're if you're playing this, please don't crunch loudly with your chips into your mic. <laughs> it was really Big funny. problem. Big There's problem. This, guy, I know, this is a dumb anecdote. And like people are like, well, she couldn't even remember how many people on her team is like because they were all dropping all the time. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm getting sassy. Yeah, I've only really had one oh, cup yeah. of coffee and I'm like, all right, time for the sass. Well, I know I'm gonna cup get number shit. two. I know, I know I'm gonna get shit for it. Anyway, I didn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, come join me. And if I you're will. crunching with your chips, meet yourself for a minute. Even if you are eating veggie chips, which is a good option. Yeah, or slurping. I hate <laughs> slurping. <They're>, uh, <laughs> this is really funny, actually, because everyone, this other guy's like, so are you enjoying those chips? <laughs> in the lobby, <laughs> while we're waiting for it to populate. Uh, what kind of chips are those? <laughs> yeah, that, and then I got on, I was like, okay, but what chips are you eating? <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's let's get down. <laughs> and then the, he kept eating the chips. That's the, the real questions here, guys. Are those Cool Ranch? Um, Yeah. So that's the Gears 5 tech test. Yeah, so I am looking forward to playing more of that later. Cool. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like It was interesting seeing how it was populated sometimes by those NPC characters. I think I had up to like two at least at one point. Right. But I'm curious, though, if that'll persist that and carry over. It's got to be just an arcade, right? Like that can't fly in Versus. There's no way that you can have AI, AI uh, companions in Versus because... Like you said, I mean, you, it spawns and runs straight at you. Yeah, I mean, like, they're they're smarter than that, but, yeah. you know, I, I could see it posing a problem. But if that's only something that happens in arcade, then okay. See, AI yeah, companions always run the gamut. They're always either you spawn and you run straight at the enemy, or they spawn and then they snipe you in the head with a pistol from a half a mile away, and there's no middle ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean... Th- what are you going to do? They're not as competent. I don't know if I was ever killed by one, but... Yeah. I like to think that I'm good at games, even though I can't remember things on what. So, yeah, what if you're interested in the tech test, it's this weekend. You can jump in. Do you have to download or what do you have to do um, to get in? Yes, you have to download. It's open? 
you have to. So if you have Games Pass, you can just download it. Okay. Um, or you have to pre-order. I'm got it. Sure. Got it. So yet another reason the, the to get standard, Games Pass. Yeah, if you have it, you just you just got it. Just download it. Well, in other news, yeah. Overwatch has a new hero, and it's my face. You, you have feelings about his uh, footwear. <laughs> He doesn't really have shoes, and yeah. it's very weird. I'm like, okay, so it's this new guy called Sigma. Yes. And he has... Sigma is an eccentric astrophysicist who hopes to unlock the secrets of the universe, unaware that he is being used as a living weapon, according to the Overwatch official Twitter account. Yes, and he is very... Eccentric. Yes. I mean, like, I think it's like he seems to have gone a little crazy when he was studying like yeah. gravity and black holes. Yeah. And, and like there's a, in his like reveal video, it shows like him kind of splitting. Yes. And yes. then like you see him almost like bed and like are this kind of gurney and like he doesn't know what's going on and he's freaking out. Right. Um, he's got this like really awesome duality to him. Yes. But that does not give him an excuse to not wear shoes. OK. Well, <laughs> shoes aside, uh, if you it's watch. A, that's my focal point on this. I'm just like, I cannot believe this. If, yeah, never mind that he's opening black holes. He's working for Talon. Uh, shoes, bro. But, but he has like full at least put some flip flops on. Actually, you know what? Like I your don't... toes are on the battlefield, yeah, man. man. What not, is this? I'm not a fan of flip flops either. Like, <laughs> like flip flops. Yeah. Anyway, I, I I think it's just such a weird thing to fixate on, but it just it's a very weird for me. I'm just like, why does this character not have shoes? <laughs> like what? <laughs> oh, I love that. That's a focal point. If it's you watch really the trailer, um, it's actually really good. So I okay, I yeah. think. Blizzard has, ever since I was a wee little baby boy playing Blizzard games, uh, their cinematics have always been great. Yeah. And I think with Overwatch, they've really kind of come into their own, not so much as just technically, wow, what a cool cinematic, um, but more storytelling. Yes. And with each new Overwatch hero that gets its own trailer or its own origin story, as we've seen with 76 and Sombra and all that, um, I think they get better and better. And this is the first one that I felt really sort of uh, many of them have been good, but this is the first one that I felt like, ooh, it was really sort of adult and mature in tone. It's about a guy whose mind basically schisms, and yes, it's because, uh, you know, he's he's playing with the forces of the universe, but this dude goes straight crazy by the end of the trailer, um, mm -hmm. and they show him strapped to a gurney and talking about how the universe is singing to him, but um, I, I think it might be the first time they they really kind of dabble. I don't know if you'd, you'd call it mental illness, but he his mind is fractured essentially yes. um and then you know talon swoops in of course no pun intended to to really kind of like uh take advantage of that and bring him into the fold and, and like they said use him as a living weapon yeah uh fortunately he is currently live on ptr so if you are an avid overwatch fan or you just are curious about you know jumping back in and seeing where the game is now which i do probably every two to three months i'd say um <clears throat> he's live on ptr now and he is a tank thank Right. Yeah, I saw a lot of people speculating before, like even when his um, kit was, or just like his design was revealed, it's like, yeah, this guy looks like a tank. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's wearing like a massive power armor suit, but um, he does a, he does a lot of cool things. I, I was watching Armando, who's on our syndication team, play him just a couple minutes ago, and yeah, he throws out a shield, which, um, you know, you can hold it down and it keeps going and then you release and it stops. Uh, so there's like a sort of a variable distance there. He, uh, he has two... Uh, I don't know. They're they're dodecahedrons, maybe. Uh, they're balls. Yeah. He has two balls floating in his hand, with which he throws at you using the power of gravity and anger. Uh, <laughs> and then they hit surfaces and bounce in different directions. But he does a lot. Like one bounce is what they kind yeah, of. Yeah, like once they hit a surface, they bounce for for maybe I don't know a couple feet, and then they disappear. But um, he also uh, he can like block all incoming projectiles. What are you doing over there? I'm checking something. Shit, Don't Miranda, worry about this. Miranda's hard at work. I am. Looking at her phone. Um, no, this is very important. Oh, my God. Guys, I, I promise this is very important. Anyway. Uh, he can Keep talking. He, I'm listening. He can block all incoming projectiles. And then I think another one of his abilities is just he basically throws a bunch of trash at you. Just like a bunch of rubble. He, like, pulls up the concrete or whatever from the ground using the power of gravity again. Um, and then whips it at you. And oh. then his ultimate, of course, is he lifts everyone in the air using... You guessed it, the power of gravity, uh, and then slams them all on the ground, and it's apparently really disorienting. Yeah, it did look like it. We yeah. saw it um, on him on uh, our guy was playing. Our guy, yeah, yeah. Mondo. Mondo. Our, our Mondo was playing, and he got slammed on the ground, and his cursor like took a nosedive and then came yeah. back up. Anyway, I was checking how many people could play in the tech test because I was like, okay. "This is gonna drive me crazy." I swear it was five, and I was like, "Yeah, it was five v 5 Okay. Anyway, we did it. 
I had to double check that, and you would not believe how hard it was using the YouTube app anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. so that is Sigma, yeah. a new Overwatch hero. Yeah, are you going to jump back cool. in? Are you, are you still, no. you're not, Definitely you're not. you're done with the Overwatch I'm brand. super done with it. No, I mean, I thought it was kind of fun with my friends, and I appreciate why people liked it a lot, yeah. um, you know, but it's, it's not really my cup of tea. Got it. Oh, I know it was game of the year. 2015? I didn't vote for it. 2015? 2016. 2016 game of the year. 26. Yeah. I thought it was 2015. No, because I think our 2015 was Witcher 3, which we'll remember. get to in a minute. Um, what if we just get to that now? You want to just do it now? Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I think people are just going to be mad at me this episode. First, I'm on my phone for a long time it's trying fine. to figure something Guys, out. Guys, seriously, we were abandoned this week. Miranda, I know we were. I Miranda was like, and I were like, like we got to put this together. Guys. You have 300 emails to go through. I have 300 emails to go to. And uh, we we're like, uh, what if we just didn't do unlock this week? But no, we pr we pushed through. We pushed. We through. fought we, through we technical details. Yes. Of getting this set up, which is oh hard. my god, it was this is a new studio. This is actually We're my first it. time in the new studio. Congrats! Yeah, I think you both seem to like it. I was reading over the comments we got on our last video, and you guys seem to like it. So I'm really glad. Yeah, I like it. I I haven't figured out how to get closer to the desk yet, so I look like I'm kind of just like yeah. kind of anyway. slouching. But the I Witcher. like this. I like the studio. Yeah, so let's get on to the Witcher. So I yeah. know we have a lot of other things to talk about. We're kind of bouncing all over the place. Sure. Um, but Te the Witcher trailer. Technically not an Xbox story, but no. it sort of is because it's related to a game that is on our top 25 best Xbox games yes. that you can play right now. Super loved. Um, so Netflix's The Witcher trailer was revealed at San Diego, Diego Comic -Con, Con, which happened this past weekend, which is also the reason a lot of people are gone. Yeah. Uh, so what did you think? No, I'm curious yeah. about your thoughts. So I watched it when it when it debuted, and mm -hmm. then I've watched it probably two or three times since then. And The Witcher 3 is probably one of my favorite games of all time. Okay. Uh, so I am cautiously optimistic. That's good. And I am very, very intrigued. Because when I said, hey, did you watch The Witcher trailer this morning? You gave me a face that looks like you just smelled something awful. <laughs> so I think some people know this about me, but I'm not really a fan of The Witcher. I appreciate why people like it, mm -hmm. and I'm actually really excited for uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Like, right. I think CG, CD Projekt Red has like some really cool stuff going on, but I just don't like Geralt. Like, I just don't want to play as him for hundreds of hours. I just don't. But he's a Witcher. I just don't connect. Like, it's really, really hard, and it's like one of the few times whenever I've looked at a game and said, "I don't know if I'm about this." Really? Like, that's never really happened to me before. But then I. Eh. What, what, what specifically about him? Is it, it just like the... He's just kind of off-putting to me yeah. for some reason. Like, he's just... Well, I mean... It, I hate the bathtub thing. <laughs> okay. Well... <laughs> That's what they think, but... <laughs> bad news, my friend, because there's going to be a bathtub scene in the show. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I probably won't watch a show. It's fine. Oh, my God. I mean, so that's the thing, right? It's like we do have sometimes luxury of like not playing something that we're not into. Yeah. And I have seen things about The Witcher. Like, I understand what it is. I understand, again, I appreciate why people like it so much. Like, what it, ha sure. it has done for RPGs. But for me personally, it's not something I want to sit through and play for so long. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. is a very big it's a hundred hour for RPG, something yeah. that I personally am not invested in. Mm -hmm. So... I totally yeah. hear you. That's kind of yeah. just where I'm at with it. Like, again, it's like, I don't want to slight anybody who likes it. Like, of course. Like, I understand why it's great. It's just... I don't, I don't like him. <laughs> you know who does like The Witcher? Who? Henry Cavill. He does. He yes. plays the game a lot. Yeah. It, Several times. In an interview, like. it came out saying that he has played it multiple times. And there's a big, long quote about how uh, he was talking about, you know, making The Witcher show is like playing the game again, but from a different perspective. And now Geralt looks like me, and that's really cool. <laughs> I didn't find it interesting. Uh, what I did find interesting, though, is the, um, the showrunner, Lauren, and I'm going to butcher her name, Lauren Schmidt Hisrich? Hisrich? good to me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in an interview at SDCC, she said uh, her approach for crafting the show, she explained the careful balancing act of managing the Witcher's epic main storyline involving Geralt, Ciri, and the dangerous times they live in with more small-scale adventures that Geralt is frequently involved with. The side quest. Which to me <laughs> is side quests, and I yeah. love the fact, because every... I mean, if you as soon as as soon as this show was announced, you go on Reddit and the first memes are like, "Oh, well, that that series is going to be like twelve years long because Geralt's not going to get anything done because he has <laughs> to go rescue a basket of chickens that were lost somewhere." Um, I love how it starts; like he's just picking up chickens. Yeah, well, how great would it be if it's just like, uh, "How many more of these roots do I have to get?" Uh, and I I love that they are actually approaching this show with that in mind. They'll do like small scale stories which to me says Geralt's going to go into a tavern and 
some really dirty, sweaty, nasty, sour guards are going to be picking on a tavern keep, and he's going to step in because uh, another theme of this show seems to be that, uh, you know, the monsters that Gerald hunts aren't always monsters. They're people, right? Mm-hmm. Like that hunting monsters trailer where it was so, so awesome. Um, that seems to be another big uh, sort of point that they're trying to get across with this. Anyway, the showrunner said, I think part of any television show is those epic journeys and everything you see building over a season and hopefully an entire series. But you also have to dig into individual episodes and really love the stories you're doing there. Bottle episodes. Mm Mm-hmm. All of our characters have sorts of side journeys, and we wanted to take the space to actually get to know them as characters, their relationships with other people, and eventually their relationships with each other. That's just as important to us as epic quests or killing monsters, so we definitely left space for that. To me, that says like there's going to be a lot of like quiet moments sitting around a fire where Siri and Geralt are like, so do you like flowers and stuff like that, you know? Um, yeah. But I, 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 do, I do love the approach that they're taking. Yeah, still keeping that human element, but also not forgetting some of the more important things mm-hmm. in the game, like like side quests. Yeah, and The Witcher is going to air uh, up purportedly sometime toward the end of 2019, according to a Netflix earnings call and as reported by Variety. Um, but the trailer itself, I'm as someone who loves Witcher, The Witcher 3 in particular, um, I actually I really enjoyed The Witcher 2 as well, but as someone who really loved The Witcher 3, um, I am cautiously optimistic. That's great. There's still a weird hill for me to climb to get on board with sort of their depiction of Henry Cavill, and I know it comes from the short stories and more of the source material than the game itself. Different licenses, Netflix's show will never... Uh, will never be sort of a reflection of The Witcher 3. Um, it'll just be based on the source work. So I, I have a weird heel to climb to get on board with Henry Cavill. Uh, he is super duper, super buff. Like there's a scene where he's sitting on a bed with no shirt on talking to Triss or somebody. Uh, and it's just jarring. Like it's jarring to see like Swerald, <laughs> Swole Geralt. Um, other than that, I think, you know, casting being what it is, uh, all the characters look really interesting, and the show actually looks like it's taking it seriously rather than a lot of the, uh, you know, I go back to, like, the the CW fantasy shows of, like, Xena and Hercules and Jack of All Trades, and, and they they were, like, fantasy, but it was very tongue-in-cheek, you know? Yeah. This oh, seems goofy. more like that adult, it's like contemporary, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, contemporary fantasy depictions of sort of akin to Game of Thrones, but... Um, yeah, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm excited for it. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. I mean, I think I'll just kind of listen to what people are saying about it around the office, but I'm mostly just curious to see how they pull off it as an adaptation. Yeah. What have they changed to make it better viewing, literally just viewing? Um, I think it's really important when something makes a transition to, like, say, book to game to TV yes. show to movie. Yeah. Like, you have to change things because that story was originally told in that one medium for a reason, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's like, how do you make this a better fit for this? Like, what do you have to change? And, oh, it'll be interesting. Yeah, and I <clears throat> I know that we currently have a, a either a rewind or a trailer breakdown that sort of delves into some of the little details in that trailer. So if, yeah. you're, if you're interested in The Witcher 3 or you're interested in the upcoming TV show, The Witcher, um, go check that out because it actually had a bunch of information in there that I had no idea about. I mean, I've never read the books. Yeah, we have a few people here who have been like deep diving into those books. So. Sam Claiborne is an encyclopedia yeah. of The Witcher series. It's yeah. insane to me. Like a lot of people were like, why doesn't Geralt have two swords on his back in the in the trailer? And it's like, Sam's like, well, uh, because <laughs> in the books, he keeps his silver sword on his horse since you rarely encounter monsters. And if you do, you know you're going to fight a monster. So it's easier to keep the sword on the horse rather than lug it around on your back. It makes total sense. I was like, okay, <laughs> that Ooh. does make sense. Um, <laughs> but yeah, go check that out. And um, I guess we'll have to see towards the end of 2019. I am excited because it's free. You don't have to go pay a movie ticket to go see if the adaptation was good or not. Mm-hmm. Movies are great, though. Movies are great, but I I'm think going. Netflix is a much better platform to test new things out. Potentially. It, yeah, because, I mean, you get more people on board, right? Like, it's not a... If you release on, a on like, HBO or Hulu, right, you release in a week-to-week-to-week-to-week-to-week format, whereas with uh, streaming sites like Netflix that just dump all the episodes immediately, mm-hmm. there's a much better conversion rate because people who are, like, mildly interested watch an episode, and they're like, okay... I'm I'm a little more on the on closer to being on board than I was previously. I'll give him another show. Uh, I'll give another shot. And then three episodes later, they're like, okay, I'm just going to binge the whole thing, right? Versus 
watching one show one week and then you're like, okay, maybe I'll check out the next one next week. And then something else comes up and they just never jump back on or paying $20 to go to the movies. I have thoughts. I also have a lot of thoughts, but I think that's a, a topic for another okay. place. Yeah. We've talked about non yeah. Xbox things for, or tangentially related Xbox yeah. things for a while now. So we're going to keep it tangential. Okay. <laughs> Gentle, tangential. Yeah. Good segue. Uh, and we're going to talk about Kojima. I also at Comic-Con. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, Everyone is at Comic-Con. So he had some comments on streaming as the future of gaming. Uh, so during his storytelling panel at Comic-Con 2019, he was talking about Death Stranding and movies. And uh, he kind of addressed how he sees the future of blurring the line between games and movies. Yeah. Not necessarily like all games, but just like there's a segment of games that will kind of form more into movies, which makes a lot of sense because obviously Kojima, Kojima just wants to make a movie. Yeah. You get that sense from everything he does. And he just loves film. Um, yeah, a lot of people have criticized him for being having like cinema envy, right? Yeah. We're using video games to make movies. Yeah, but it's it's different, right? Mm -hmm. Like kind of going back to what you were saying before, like every story is told in that medium, hopefully with that purpose in mind right. and like to optimize your storytelling through that. Anyway, so Kojima said, uh, gaming will be streaming too. In the near future, games and movies will come closer in a similar category. So I think we're going into an era with a lot of possibilities. It will not just be interactive or non-interactive. There will be some something in between as well, uh, which is interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think there's already kind of that. Yeah. So you look at, uh, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like this show should be sponsored by Netflix, but <laughs> look at uh, Netflix's Black Mirror Bandersnatch, right? The yeah, Choose Your Own Adventure thing, thing, which I started. I didn't finish. Um, we have a gun on it. Do we? Uh, apparently, the ending was was pretty decent. So there are multiple endings. Oh, ooh! It's like a video game. Yeah, um, nice flow chart for you if you want that. But <laughs> of course, we do. Who did that? Janet actually is one of her first projects here. Awesome. Janet Garcia is one of our newest wiki editors, and she that was like one of her first projects with us. But I could definitely see that being what he means by like the intersection of. Uh, Interactive and non-interactive, right? Yeah, and he kind of goes as far as to say, so his quote, so in the next five years, everything will change. Movies, music, games, how we distribute, how we share with each other will definitely change as art. It's no longer defined by a certain group or elitist or a definition. Cre creativity is you. Uh, you can all create because we're all human beings. It's like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. Uh, and what the internet has allowed is that you can not just create, you can actually share it. Um, so I think he was just kind of going on about like, you know, again, streaming as being a future possibility yeah. for games and like these kind of in between games and these different kinds of games can form. And that'll be a big part of streaming, which is, is interesting. I think exploring different ways to tell stories is really fun and, and kind of like a why not? Yeah. And I mean, I, he's to, like the technology itself. I don't I don't think it changes the way creativity is done. I think it changes the approach of distribution and sharing, right? Like he said. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we were kids, we all drew stuff or did stop motion Lego movies or, you know, whatever. Um, but with the advent of the internet, you actually had a platform through which you could share. So I think this is just sort of like, I feel like what he's talking about is 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 breaking down barriers for more creatives to share the work that they do. Right. To get it noticed. There's an easier avenue if they were that, like potentially more even easier if like gaming and streaming become more prevalent yeah which is an interesting idea i think so we're, we're starting to see streaming pop up a lot more too right um i want to go into like xcloud a little bit like so that is streaming video games to like your phone and like i ryan and i got to talk about that during e3 and how we got to kind of test it out and it mostly ran pretty smooth and like that was right. just like an interesting way to consume games yeah i think there's still a lot of limits to that and um yeah, I think the infrastructure of the U.S., right, the broadband yeah. infrastructure, it's not, it, I don't think it's ready to be everyone's priority no. platform. Right? I think, but but it's like testing the waters, right? Yeah. Like how, I feel like that's what happens with like a lot of technology. Like it's testing the waters and the few can get it. And then as it becomes more accessible, more people can get it and maybe it gets more mainstream. Mm -hmm. It just, does this work? We don't know. We'll see. And that also kind of brings us to our other story, which is with Google Stadia offering roughly one free game per month. So they kind of talked a little bit more about their, so like they're the most direct as far as like streaming games is our platform, right? That's it. That's which all that, that's all it does. Makes sense because, okay, Google has like a lot of data centers. Also, I always have to mention my dad works for Google, like just so transparent that, sort of thing. Your dad works for Google? He does. Awesome. Anyway, he works at a data center. He like manages one. Anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I was really to, proud of him. I was trying to think of a joke and I couldn't think of anything. Oh, anyway. I, I was picturing like my uncle works for Nintendo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I also have an uncle who works for Kentucky. <laughs> I don't. And you're going to uh, get banned. <laughs> Oh gosh, I remember that. Do you remember that on Xbox Live? <laughs> My dad works for Xbox Live and I wrote down your username. Oh, poor kid. Yeah. Anyway, um, so like that is like what Google's doing with Stadia is trying to go further into that ecosystem, right? Right. And we're still learning more about it and it's kind of weird because it's a subscription, but also it has its limitations, right? So it's not just like having a library of free games. It's not a Netflix sort of yes, idea. Correct. Um, but streaming. And it's also, okay, so kind of going to the story, like the, the director of product, um, Andre, I'm guessing it's Andre, Ms. Uh, Andre, anyway. Yeah, Andre Dor Doronichev. Yeah, we're, we're getting some tough names today. Uh, said on a Reddit AMA that the Stadia Pro will be more like Xbox Live Gold rather than Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, so that subscription fee is $9.99 per month, and then subscribers get access to 4K resolution, 60 FPS, 5.1 surround sound, and a free game a month starting with Destiny 2, the collection. Um, and he said, he added that there was kind of a give or take meeting. Yeah, a free game a month, give or take. Yeah, so it's like they're... Might be some months where you get more than one game, some that you don't get at all. So, like, this is still, you know, figuring out that ecosystem, right? So, the whole thing with Stadia is that you essentially you buy your controller and then you can, you have a Google Chrome and then you can buy games and then stream them. Yeah. So, you don't actually download them. You're just constantly streaming them. So, like, that infrastructure is going to be really interesting to see how it works. And I've heard pretty mixed things so far. I haven't actually gotten to play it myself. Yeah, it kind of depends on the platform you're using. If you are using... I think it's an ultimate cast you have to use instead of mm -hmm. Chromecast. Um, you need to buy the controller, which has sort of a uh, wireless connection in it that connects to the Google servers. That's how it, that's how it sort of uh, transfers the data into your TV. Yeah. Uh, if you're playing on PC, you can just use an Xbox One controller, right? As long as you have a way to connect to those servers, uh, you don't necessarily need to buy Google's controller. But at the same time, um, I mean, if you are... Uh, a subscriber to the pro service, I mean, you're streaming at 4K 60 um, with, in addition to that sort of one game per month. But there is also a free version. Yeah. So the free version as well. Yeah. The free version is 1080p, um, 60 FPS, mm -hmm. and then stereo sound. Yeah. So it's like a, a downgrade of streaming, but, yeah. you know, that's probably fine for a lot of people. I imagine, I would assume. I imagine a lot of people would be good. And it's also probably a lot more, just like, or just, I guess, easier to stream. Yeah. Like, can your, can you stream a 4K game? Like that's a lot. Yes, that's a lot of internet, man. I, yeah, yeah. I got I got a fiber line put in at my house, so <gasps> wow, I can do it. Wow, I can do it. You're all fancy, but I won't, <laughs> um, because I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not on board yet. I I need to see. I need to see more practical applications. Right. right? So, so tying this back into Kojima, I'm very curious as to why he thinks streaming is going to be like a big thing. So it's like, we're even just talking about Stadia, which is like the, like, I think at the forefront of we're going to stream games. Like we're yeah. bringing this as like an, ex like a thing that people can just access and it's easier to get your games. Maybe like go on, play anywhere. You can play with, you know, on your laptop, you can play. Yeah just on your phone, but... And then to that degree, xCloud, right? As yeah, well. and like xCloud's also like that, but we're also s skeptical, and again, I, I did say that, like, you know, this is a thing, but we gotta see how it pans out, but I guess for people like us who are really so involved in gaming, like, mm -hmm. what does it add, and how does that add any sort of more accessibility to developers or creatives who wanna do more things that they can't already do? Yeah, so uh, how I interpreted Kojima's quote on this is is sort of, Streaming becoming the dis, uh, the distribution platform that allows creatives to get their message out into the world more easily, um, you know, without having to go through manufacturing or without having to go through a, a publisher or distributor. Um, I mean, I imagine if you're going to get on a streaming service, you still have to go through Microsoft or, St or Google or, or whatever. But, um, you know, you're in your bedroom coding, making a, a cool little indie game, hmm. and then you hit enter, it compiles, you're done, and then you... You can also just put it on a trial. I don't know. On what? Itch.io. Like, there's, like, a lot of different platforms yes, yes. on PC and stuff that already exist, I think, to help facilitate that publishing. Yeah, so I, it's interesting. Like, there there are ways to get to get about that, but, like, what does streaming do differently than those do Yeah, already? so that's kind of why I wanted to bring this story up in conjunction with Kojima's comments because I feel like there's, all, there's so many questions, and I really wish we could ask Kojima a little bit more to, like, elaborate on what he means by that, and yeah. I think maybe he's just thinking more of the in between of games and movies and like that being its streaming thing yeah, of, I, I agree. of saying like maybe Netflix goes 
even further into games like making those things and they're not witcher sized 4k games that you're trying to stream yeah i and i think like that sort of semi-interactive like bandersnatch like he was mm -hmm. talking about i think that can only be accomplished with streaming because you need to be able to like change files depending on every situation that arises right like if you if you come to a fork in the road and you choose A or B, that's a different file now that you have to you have to go through. That's there's no reason you couldn't download that though. Yes, and that's the other thing. Otherwise, yeah. that becomes a much larger issue, right? Like, yeah, if you are if you are doing a semi interactive four K three hour movie and you have to download possible differences for each choice that you make, you're quickly running into like terabyte size downloads right right so it's like all a challenge already yeah yeah so i uh, i don't know i i think he i think in his mind like the way he's talking about right now and again i don't i've never met kojima but uh, i i think he is talking about the way him once the, yeah i, I saw That's him once as well I saw, I saw him walk by at e3 and i was like okay <laughs> time to go to an appointment <laughs> um i think he is talking about sort of how netflix and streaming have changed the way that tv shows and movies i mean Netflix has distribution has changed. Yes, yes. Distribution has changed. Netflix is now creating content on I mean, stream that is that rivals big studios. Right. And whenever I think about distribution with games and that changing, my biggest or I guess I first go to is Games Pass. Yeah. Like that's that's the big thing, which isn't streaming. It's just a subscription service where I can have this massive library of games where I can right. download them whenever I want. Yeah. And like that is huge. But I'm still, I guess, trying to figure out how streaming works and like how, especially within the U.S., our internet infrastructure exists. And it, it's it's not there yet. I mean, you, you you and I live in the Silicon Valleys, right? So yeah. we we have. And even then, we're skeptical. We're like, man, yeah. I don't know if I can download that. We have easy access to broadband, and we have access to fiber if we want it. Which a lot of places, I mean, fiber isn't going to get there for another decade. Um, on the coasts and in certain pockets of the U.S., like this is streaming is totally valid option for you, but. The majority of the majority of the country, like it's, they can't buy into it yet, right? Yeah, and so I guess uh, it's just like a lot of questions, and it's interesting. It's interesting thinking about the future and seeing where gaming goes next. Yeah, and how I guess that's more is streaming the future of video gaming. I don't know. I just use it for my shows. Big question. <laughs> that's the headline of the episode. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think. Uh, yeah, let us know what you guys think. If that's something I'm curious as people's take, yeah, because because yeah, we have conversations with everyone who lives in Silicon Valley, and we have conversations with people who live in New York, and I'm curious to hear what people who like don't don't have access to like these the hyper fast bright broadband that is required to pull this off. Yeah, I would wonder if there's like this even an ecosystem for like these more bite sized games that I, I'm assuming Kojima's referencing the potentially network. referring to right um, that are that blend of game and cinema and just a different sort of platform for that kind of thing to exist. Yeah, I mean, streaming could, keeping the Netflix sort of Bandersnatch theme in mind, streaming could be the sort of renaissance of the adventure game, right? Yeah, bring them back. Yeah. I mean, they still exist, but like, yes, but full force. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. like King's Quest or any of that kind of stuff where, you know, the entire game was just different options that you selected. Can you yeah. imagine watching like a, a, a I don't know, a, hyper-realistic CGI video game that you chose different avenues on. That'd Sounds like Telltale. Sounds like a Telltale game, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We know what happened there, which is <laughs> sad. Very uh, sad. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Clearly, no one is no one is <laughs> clicking anymore. Yeah, so we'll see, I guess. And I think that's kind of the end of our stories. We yeah. talked about the shoeless <laughs> Overwatch era. Fumbled kind of, through some kind of a light week. details. It was good, though. Yeah, so uh, I think I think this is kind of a shorter episode. It yeah. is a little bit harder. There's only two of us, and it, it's a little bit of a lighter week. Yeah. Uh, but if you're interested in more things, of course, always check out IGN.com. That's where we work. Yeah, unfortunately, no loot box or trivia this week yeah. because Ryan has access to all that information. And he has a master keys, and we do not have access to them. We do not. Which no. is a conversation we're going to have with him when he gets back from vacation next I week. I think so. Serious conversation time. Yeah. Anyway, Brandon, let us know. What are you working on? What's up with you? Uh, <clears throat> very similar to where I was at two months ago, I am now planning Gamescom, which is Europe's version of E3, um, which is it's also like seven times the size of E3, I think. It's really, really daunting and massive, so... I'm working on that. I might, I might miss a couple shows in the in the near future. We'll see you again uh, someday. <laughs> someday after August, I'll Aww. I'll see you in September. Um, no, I'll still be around. Um, but yes, that is what I'm working on right now. Just many many 
outreach, talking to publishers, talking to developers, figuring out what our live show is going to look like, figuring out what our editorial appointments are going to look like, yeah. figuring out what games people want to hear about. Um, Tell them. Tell yeah. them what you want to see. Yeah, hit me up. Let me know. If you're still you, still hanging in there with us. <laughs> yeah, if you're if you're looking for something, if you're looking for news on the next big game and you're you're looking forward to Gamescom, just hit me up on Twitter. Let me know. I'm, I'm genuinely curious to see what people are interested in. And what is your Twitter? Good sir. My Twitter is just my name, at Brandon Tyrell, B-R-E-N-D-I-N-T-Y-R-R-E-L. And there you have it. What about you, Miranda Sanchez? Um, I am finishing up Anime Expo coverage because, yes, that's somehow still a thing. I'm working <laughs> on some previews, but they're not necessarily Xbox related. Um, and I'm still thinking about Outer Wilds. So if you have not played that, that's my plug. Play Outer Wilds. It's on Games Pass. It is in a beautiful sci-fi adventure. Not the Outer Worlds. Not Outer Worlds. That's not out yet. That's not out I'm yet. sure that will be also very cool. Yeah. I've, I've heard good things. I haven't gotten to play it yet, but... Yeah, want to. Um, everyone is talking about the Outer Wilds, and I, I think that's my next one. It's so good. It is summer. There's a lot of possibilities of things you can play right now, a lot of things to catch up on. Catch up on Outer Wilds, and it's so good. And that's that's going to be my message. Also, let's play Gears 5 this weekend. Yeah, Gears 5. Yeah, that'll be um, good. Cool. All right, and with that, that is our show. Hopefully next week we will have a more stable, informed, good show. Maybe there'll <laughs> be two more fun. people. We're, goof- we're goofing. We, we're yeah, goofing. It's a good summer. Yeah. It's, huh. a, it's, a, it's a very special episode. Yeah, so uh, with that, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.